Point of intersection questions are going to be solved basically in one of three ways. We're either going to use uh, substitution, which is where you manipulate an equation so that it's like y equals, x equals, and then you substitute that equation in with the other one. And a lot of people really like substitution. I don't know why. It's very straightforward to them, I guess. And so that, that seems to be their default way of solving a, a system of equations. Sometimes it is the most efficient thing, especially if we have one of the equations as like a quadratic or something that's not a line. Then it gets better. We're better off doing substitution. That is not the case here. These are both lines. And we're better off using our second method, which is the elimination method. And this is the one where we basically treat the equations like numbers that we can add or subtract. So we'll do that in a second, but just to clarify, there is another way, which is to guess and check. This only works really on the SAT, but it only also works some of the time. It would not work in this question because instead of finding the point or the x value or the y value, we're being asked to solve for this weird thing, x minus y. So I don't really know what x minus y is just by looking at these answer choices because there's an infinite number of values of x and y that could produce, let's say, two-thirds as the answer. So there are cases where guess and check will work. This is not one of them because of the complexity of the answer choices. So unfortunately, that's not going to work. Substitution could work, but it's way more efficient to do elimination. So let's look what we do here. When we do elimination, we just add these two equations together. Our goal is to take two equations with two variables and turn them into one equation with one variable. And so we're kind of doing the same thing we do with substitution, getting rid of one of the variables. But in order to do it, we need them to cancel out when we add. In this case, it's basically set up for us to eliminate. Because if we add these two equations, we're going to add 7x plus 6x. That's going to get us 13x. I'm going to go all the way down here. 3y minus 3y, or 3y plus negative 3y, either way you want to think about it, is zero y's. So this is canceling out for us, which lets us go from having two variables to one. And then we do 8 and 5, which is 13. So on harder questions with point of intersection, we will have to do other things to make this work out nicely. Sometimes we need to multiply one of the equations by a number so that the, the, the variables will cancel out. Sometimes we have to multiply both equations by a number in order to do that. So it can get annoying. But one advantage of elimination over substitution is that we usually don't need to deal with fractions when we use elimination. With substitution, we're going to need to kind of get that x or the y by itself. So that means dividing by 3, dividing by 7. Weird things are going to happen, and it, and it can kind of make the algebra more difficult. But notice here, very quickly, we're down to a very solvable equation, right? 13x equals 13. Let's just divide by 13 to get that x is equal to 1. Great, that's half of my answer. Now, in order to find y, I need to take that x and plug it back into one of the equations. It really doesn't matter which one. In this case, I don't think either one is more efficient. I'm just going to do the first equation. So 7x plus 3y equals 8. We put that x in for x here. So 7 times 1 plus 3y equals 8. 7 plus 3y equals 8. Subtract 7, running out of room. 3y equals 1, divide by 3, y is equal to a third. And we still have one more step, is now we need to do x minus y, so that's going to be 1 minus a third, right? x minus y. 1 minus a third is 2 thirds, so that ends up being the answer. Now, you're going to have a lot of work for most uh, point of intersection questions because these are pretty textbook algebra. You need to solve, you're gonna have to move these variables around. So this is a great example of just like, make sure you do it 
and show your work for every step because there are a lot of steps. And if you make a careless mistake, it's gonna be harder to track it down if you have done half the steps in your head. It's also the case that like, you know, you're less likely to make a careless mistake when you see the work for every single step and you can maybe catch it as you do it. Because if you do, a, if you make a careless mistake in the beginning, you're gonna keep going for a long while, wasting a lot of time with that mistake. And it, it, hopefully you catch it at the end, but even still you've wasted a lot of time that you could have prevented uh, which by, by saving that mistake at the beginning that you could have saved that time for other questions. So point of intersection, pretty textbook algebra, but just make sure you actually show the algebra on the page to maximize the chances you get it right.